check this out. There are so many games that they can play. Hello everyone, it's Amanda with Eat, Pray, Crunch, and today I am doing a review of the computer game Night Zookeeper, which is a writing curriculum for homeschooling families, or I mean, you can use it as a supplement if your kids are in regular school as well, um, but it is really great for helping to develop their writing skills in the elementary years. This is my actual very first sponsored video that I have ever done. So full disclosure, this is a sponsored video. However, I will be giving entirely my honest opinion. Um, we have had a couple of weeks to give it a try now, and I just wanted to give you my impressions of it so far, and if we will continue using it down the road here. I will be honest that I was very excited that the folks at Night Zookeeper reached out to me because this is actually a curriculum that I was planning on trying anyway. <laughs> like I was thinking of looking into it like that same week that they reached out to me. So it's so serendipitous. <laughs> I was really excited because this looks like a really cool program. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos lately on writing programs for elementary school kids for homeschooling. And a number of the folks that I follow were raving about this Night Zookeeper program. And so I thought that it would be a really good supplement. First of all, let me give a little bit of background on my kids. I have three kids, one who just turned nine, one who just turned seven, and one who is four and a half. So obviously the four and a half year old is still too young to be writing compositions on things. <laughs> so this is mainly for the seven and the nine year old. I must say that this review is coming from the mother of neurodiverse kids. So this will be coming from that perspective. Um, that might make my review slightly different than from a family who has neurotypical kids. Although I think it works for neurodiverse and neurotypical kids alike. My oldest Alex, who is the nine-year-old, um, he is twice exceptional, meaning he is gifted and he is autistic. It just so happens that he is, you know, very advanced, especially with math and science kind of stuff. And, and his reading ability is is quite good as well. Um, however, because of his autism, he also has an ADHD diagnosis, which affects things. Um, he has executive functioning struggles. Executive functioning is the part, you know, that uses the prefrontal cortex in your brain that involves planning, organizing, that kind of thing. And most Neurodiverse people, be it uh, ADHD or autism, struggle with executive functioning. And that is absolutely the case with my son. And this is also true of my daughter who we suspect has ADHD, although we have not gotten a diagnosis for her yet. And she is also very bright, but in a very different way than Alex's. But like her creativity and her insights on things and like her deep care for humanity and um, justice and things like that are ways that her potential giftedness comes out. Um, but we also think that she likely has ADHD, possibly dyslexia, don't really think it's that, but we are going to be getting her tested for that as well. So there are some learning differences with um, both kids that we are dealing with uh, when we approach any curriculum. And this one is no different. So because of their neurodiversity, both kids really struggle with the act of writing. <laughs> um, even though they are very bright, writing is not something that comes naturally to them. So this is the reason that I have been seeking out writing programs. For Alex, I'll be using lightning literature combined with Write Shop for fourth grade and then adding in Night Zookeeper as a supplement. And I am hoping that that combination will really help with that difficulty with writing that he has. So that said, going into this, he is very, uh, 
resistant when it comes to doing anything that's writing. Like right now our goal is just getting him to write one sentence because it just feels so laborious and boring to him to have to put pen to paper. We are working on typing as well. He's definitely not fluent in that. I think once he gets, once he really picks up the typing, I think writing is going to get a lot easier for him since it can be so much faster and he can get his ideas out so much faster that way. Um, but for now it's still a learning curve. <laughs> so, and it's the same kind of resistance that I get with my daughter when we are doing any sort of writing. Now at Alex's third grade level, so while we are still working on like handwriting with my seven year old, and when it involves writing more than that, I usually am having her dictate to me and I am writing things for her as she dict dictates to me kind of thing. Um, with Alex, he's expected to be writing a lot more at this age. However, he really struggles with that. Like I said, we are trying to just get him to write one sentence right now and then have him dictate the rest to us. Um, for his various assignments that we have to do. Our goal is to have him writing two sentences by the end of the year and having him write a full paragraph by fourth grade. Those are our current goals with Alex. And with Sophie, you know, she's still mastering just basic reading. And so that comes into play with this review as well. And so she hasn't had that much experience with actual writing a whole lot of stuff at this point. She's only in first grade. <laughs> so, um, but Night Zookeeper is tailored towards these different ages and makes adjustments to the things that they do at those levels. They make them age appropriate, which is great. So let's jump into talking about Night Zookeeper, what it is and what I think of it. It is an online computer program and you get uh, a login for your, each child. And when you log them in, it takes you to the Night Zoo. And basically it is a whole gamut of activities that you can do that support writing. So they have writing prompts, they have games that you can play that involve typing, spelling, vocabulary, um, things of that nature, and you can interact actually with other kids that are also on Night Zookeeper. So if you choose to, you don't have to, but if you choose to, your kid can publish the things that they are writing so that other kids can see what they write and they can also read the things that the other kids are writing. So I think it's really cool and they create their own little animal, which is fun. And then you can collect the other kids' animals as well. So they have all these little incentives that you can do for doing all of these writing related activities. So anyway, they adjust all of these activities to the level of your kid. What that looks like with Sophie, my younger seven-year-old, is I am sitting there with her and walking her through a lot of this stuff because she's still learning how to read. She's a little bit of a struggling reader as well, um, so she definitely needs my assistance in reading the stuff and like answering the questions that they ask, that kind of thing. For a child that is a little bit behind in reading or struggling in reading, it definitely can work, but it's gonna be more parental involvement to make it work, which is fine with me. I, cause I think it's kind of fun to sit there with her. Although that might be a con for if you have a lot of kids and you need to be, you know, setting your child up to do a learning activity while you're helping tend to another child, get that kind of thing. Um, that might be a little more challenging if you have a struggling reader or a younger reader who's just not quite there yet. So that um, is something to keep in mind. For me, that's not a problem and it might not be for you. It just depends on your situation and your kid's reading and writing level, that kind of thing. But Sophie really enjoyed it. I will put some footage of her here. Sophie is creating her own animal. Mom, mommy, what is these things? So you click those so to good. change the animal. So if you don't want a penguin, you can pick something else. It so it looks like you can make a mix and match I animal. So That's kind of stuff. interesting. <laughs> so you're going to put a penguin on a chicken body? Yep. <laughs> okay. Here's now Sophie's animal. Gonna... And save. <laughs> so cute. 
What's a Quick den? Quick way to see what what's, activities we can do. What's a den? A den is like where an animal lives. I do the den. Okay. Uh, okay. I guess the next, next thing they want you to do a, is play. Uh, Cortina is curtain, so what color are curtain? What shall we play? Right. We read a little passage and now we're answering some comprehension questions. Which word best describe Rhea? Lazy, active, mean, or tidy? Active. Active? Okay. Active. Okay, and then you do submit. All right. Three out of three. So this is good for reading comprehension. Good. Three out of three. Mommy, what's this one? So apparently you can interact with other kids who are also on Night Zookeeper and see the animals that they've made, and you can buy them with the points that you earn. Ooh. No. Mm. Mm. Maybe. So These are all so cute. I think I want this one. Okay, that one is snowy. I'm going to buy snowy. Okay. Very nice. So apparently we do these activities to power up the flashlight, which helps get animals out of trouble. And to buy my other animals. Yeah. Yeah, and you also earn points that way, which helps you buy other animals with your points. For my zoo. Yeah, so we're going to try World Book Day and write a description of a book. So this is a writing activity we get to do. So that was Sophie exploring the night zookeeper. She had so much fun making her little um, animal and everything. It's almost like having a dialogue with the night zookeeper where they ask you questions about your animal and you answer them. And um, it's, it's fun. She had a lot of fun, um, you know, even though I was reading them to her and, you know, typing in the answers for her with her dictating to me. Um, she thought that that was really fun. We got it so recently we haven't had a chance to fully explore the full extent of all of the games and everything, but what we have tried so far has been really fun and engaging. It definitely, I think, will be motivating for her. So for Alex, I told him that we had this new game and he was really excited to start it and he made his own little animal and everything as well. But then once he realized that it was writing, that resistance, <laughs> that resistance struck again. And I definitely had to help him get over that hump a little bit. So I offered to have him dictate to me as well. And that made it a little bit easier. Having this be like an incentive based thing, like where they get the flashlight power and these little rewards for the writing that they do, um, that definitely is a good motivator for Alex. I will put in a little footage here of Alex trying it out. So now Alex is taking his turn and creating his creative animal. You got a little lion going there. Now Alex is answering all the questions. Very nice. So you got to see a little bit of Alex exploring and making his little animal and stuff as well. I also just wanted to log in myself and show you just from my perspective, kind of walk you through everything without having my child sitting right there, just so you can see like, you know, a quick rundown from the parent's perspective and with a little bit of commentary. So I will do that now. So here's a little tour of the night zoo. I'm using my son Alex's account and he is nine years old. So he has written a couple of things here and gotten flashlight power. It says, great work, your flashlight is full, use it to explore the night zoo. So we click the flashlight. Click on your flashlight to clear the clouds. Ooh. Now click on the egg to collect a new animal. Click on the collect button to find an animal made by another night zookeeper. Okay, so they, this is very collaborative in that you can see what other kids who are playing this as well 
are making in their zoos as well. So that's kind of fun. So here are some of the animals that the other kids have made. These are very cute. Oh, wow. Pretty fancy ones. Let's go with plotting pink star because he likes everything that is star and astronomy related, even though it's probably a sea star, but that's okay. All right. So you get these points when you do your activities and from, and you get the flashlight power as well. So it gives you all of these incentives for doing all the little writing tasks. Thank you so much for collecting me. I love my new home. I okay, see so basically it just takes you through everything that you need to do one thing at a time. So it's very easy to follow. Open the map to see your night zoo. Okay. So it's nice. Like it doesn't require that much like of a learning curve you just it tells you what to do as you go which is really nice help help sam is that you what happened so you just click through these i'm lost in the fog can you come and save me Power up your flashlight to get closer to Sam. Playing any activity with any of your animals will help power up your flashlight. Okay, so then it takes you to another writing activity. So let's look at, oh look, there's a message. They send you messages. Actual people look at your kids' writing and give them actual feedback, which we haven't done yet, but that is very cool got awards for creating animals. Okay. Animals created awards. Okay. Okay. So here's my zoo. I wanted to just walk you through some of the activities. Oh, okay. So I guess Alex can make an avatar for himself. We'll do that later, but I just wanted to show you some of the activities. So so many activities to choose from. There are awesome animal characters. Write about this new arrival. <laughs> it's like a tiger parakeet. <laughs> Game competition. Electro spike spelling. So they even have activities on spelling, which is nice. My kids could definitely use practice on that. March's writing leagues. Okay, and the Night Zookeeper Show. So down here are more games. Like there are just, check this out. There are so many games that they can play. Oh, Alex is going to like the Moon Adventure. That's right up his alley. So definition of words, word pairs. What else do we have here? Writing animal reports. Monster text types, wonderful words with will, so that they do vocabulary building. Poetry with Rhea, Sam's story writing. The persuasive professor, so they're even teaching persuasive writing, that's nice. So probably be a little beyond where Alex is at this point, but I'm hopeful that we will get there as he progresses. Dialogue, and then you can actually earn more as you go as well. Free write. So they just have a general free write. Uh, we saw the moon adventure. Desert disaster. I'm not sure what that is. Igloo city. Trouble in Tusk Temple. Through the keyhole. The giraffes of Whispering Wood. The pirate ship. So I guess these are topics that you can write on. So Will's Quiz Quest. So here's more games. Let's see. Oh, these are challenge. I'm not sure what the difference is between challenges and games. Oh, I see. It tells you over here what these rows are. Okay, so these are lessons. These are writing tasks. And these are challenges. I'm not sure the difference between a challenge and a game. 
but it says Will's Quiz Quest, Eek's Word Code, Sea Lion's Sentences, Maggie's Matching, Grudge's Groups, Birdie's Bumble, Beaver's Blank, and Sam Spies. Those all sound like fun. Oh, and here are the games. Underwater Word Hunt. Alex is really into computer games. Like, he hasn't had a chance to really play them much. Um, but because they are scarce in our house, I think that that's going to be really motivating to him because he really likes um, computer games. So Word Hop, Word Climb, Torch Type, Word Wings, Word Pairs, Sentence Dash, Night Zoom, Word Woods. Oh my goodness, there's so many things to choose from. Diary writing characters. So this is projects. I'm not sure what the difference is between writing and projects, but that's cool. Animal, awesome animal characters. Escape from conform prison and write night zookeeper book. Six with Josh. Oh, okay. So they there is a whole series of night zookeeper books that you can actually order through their website. Um, you can check the link in my description below if you want to check out their books. We may end up doing that if my kids really get into this. Um, but it has stories that go along with everything that is in uh, the game here. So um, that's pretty cool. There are adventures that you can do. Okay, so that is the activities section. Um, then I guess, let's see, this is where you see your zoo and all of the achievements that you have. So like I said, you earn this flashlight power down here by doing writing tasks. I guess Alex is next. Next, next task is draw, is drawing his avatar. Um, but once they get flashlight power, then they can clear all of the fog um, in the night zoo here. So they have different incentives for doing these writing activities. And let's see what the blog is. I guess they have... Oh, I see. So you can see other things that... Um, other night zookeeper kids have written. So that's cool. So you can share what you've written and see the other things that they've written. I think that's really cool to have that uh, sense of community for the kids. I would definitely advise them though about definitely not putting anything too personal out on the things that they share on here since other people can see it as well. You know, like address and phone number and that kind of thing. Um, but other than that, I think that's pretty cool. So writing, drawing. Okay. So I, so you can see the other kids drawings. Oh, okay. So here's where you can see other kids, animals. There's just so much to explore here. So fun. Oh, wow. So it actually gives you some instruction on all the different types of writing you can do. There's story, newspaper report, report, poem, persuasive writing, diary entry, and not sure what the upload is, but that's really cool that you can choose by type of writing. And it looks like even more activities to do here. Holy moly, there is so much to explore. This is fantastic. So I think that's just about everything there is to see in The Night Zookeeper. So there you have it. That gives you a good idea of what is involved in Night Zookeeper and all of the plethora of activities that are in there that just looks so much fun and engaging. And I think this is something that we are definitely going to keep, probably not as our main, writing uh, curriculum, but definitely as a supplement to help cement the things that we are learning in our main curriculum. So um, I am really 
looking forward to continuing to explore this with my kids, especially we'll probably really dive in deep um, over the summer when we have more time and um, next year as well, once we really start focusing on learning the mechanics of writing <laughs> and everything that goes into writing different styles of writing um, and that kind of thing. So I think it will be um, a really good way to motivate my kids. I showed you when I was walking you through the website, they also have a whole series of books that you can get with them um, that you can check out. I have a link below. We have considered getting those ourselves um, just because I think once the kids get a little more invested in the game and really learn the game and get really into it, I think that um, reading those books about the stories that go with it will be really fun and make the whole thing even more rich. Okay, so I just wanted to read a little bit of the description from Night Zookeeper themselves just so you can get their definition of what who they are and what they believe in and that kind of thing. So they say that by using this program it has many benefits including improving core reading and writing skills, personalized feedback from a dedicated team of tutors so they actually have real human beings giving your kids feedback on their writing. So they actually send your kids messages, real people like look at their writing and give them feedback, which I think is amazing. There are weekly lessons that incorporate interactive video elements and games to teach your children key skills. And there are publishing opportunities and weekly competitions with real life prizes. So that's like I was saying is your kids can share their writing in the community and they can actually win prizes by doing so, which is really cool. Um, and there are also free monthly educational printables, which is nice that if you are a homeschooler, you know, printables are always a fantastic thing. So if you guys are interested in trying out Night Zookeeper, um, I have an affiliate link that you guys can use that really helps out my channel. So if you use that link, you get 50% off of an annual subscription, which makes it super affordable. It is usually a little over $100 for a yearly subscription, um, but with 50% off, it's only $59.99 for one child for a whole year or $79.99 for two to three kids. So that is a really, really good deal considering everything that you are getting for this whole writing curriculum. It's really quite good. I mean, compared to some of the other language arts curriculums that um, we have paid for, it is this is very affordable. So if you sign up, you get a free seven day trial and then it's 50% off for the whole year. So that's a pretty darn good stinking deal, <laughs> if you ask me. And I have truly been the curriculum research queen lately. And I can tell you that after all of the curriculum that I have been researching lately, that is a very good price for a writing curriculum. So definitely give that link a click if you are interested. And I really hope that this was a helpful review for you. If you are considering looking into Night Zookeeper, I hope it gave you a bit of an idea of what it's all about and if it might be a good fit for you and your family. So thank you guys so much for watching this and I am looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care. Bye guys. Bye.